Hello and welcome back. At Tell, we recognize that establishing a group and starting a church is not always an easy task. We are here to continue to prepare you, leaning on God's word and the examples of those who went before us. Again, I'm Pastor Peter. Thank you for joining me for lesson three of the Let Us Worship part two course. We can be encouraged by the ministry work of the Apostle Paul. In this lesson, we'll study Paul as he established a church in the city of Corinth. Corinth had two busy ports as ships anchored there for commerce. Sailors, traders, travelers, and hustlers came to and from the city. Many of these people were focused on getting rich or get rich schemes. Some, of course, were dishonest. Corinth was a wild city, known for its sordid culture, prostitution, and rampant moral corruption. In general, the Corinthians had a very different set of standards for conduct than the Jews and early Christians of the day. Paul was able to establish the church in Corinth and stay there for a year and a half. However, the spiritual health of the congregation deteriorated shortly after Paul left. The pagan culture quickly infiltrated the church. Martin Luther says of the Corinthian church, things got so wild and disorderly that everyone wanted to be the expert and do the teaching and make what he pleased of the gospel, the sacrament and faith. Among the church members, there was drunkenness, public sexual sins, accusations of crimes, lawsuits against one another, and leaders teaching false doctrine. Paul addressed each of these problems in his inspired letter in 1 Corinthians. He begins with baptism. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Paul compares baptism to the crossing of the Red Sea. He encourages the Corinthians to reflect on the Israelites who followed Moses, walked through the Red Sea, and escaped death from Pharaoh. The Israelite people represent what happens in baptism today. We follow Jesus and go through the waters of baptism. Baptism is for everyone, children, infants, and adults. All ages must escape the devil and eternal death through the waters of baptism. Paul's letter urges us all to make use of baptism. It is a powerful means of grace which offers forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Paul continues to teach about the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul addresses issues with administering communion. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Instead of unity, there was division in the church. Instead of celebrating the Lord's Supper together, some were celebrating it privately and excluding others. Some church members were even getting drunk on the communion wine. In order to celebrate the Lord's Supper properly, it's important to understand why we commune as a church. The Lord's Supper is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine. 
instituted by Christ for Christians to eat and drink. Paul explains further in the following verses. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. Instead, let a person examine himself, and after doing so, let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For if anyone eats and drinks in an unworthy way, because he does not recognize the Lord's body, he eats and drinks judgment on himself. Scripture has made clear how we are to participate in the Lord's Supper and received Christ's true body and blood. As Martin Luther wrote in the small catechism, a sacrament is a sacred act through which Christ offers, gives, and seals the forgiveness of sins, and so also life and salvation. As believers, we are so blessed to have the means of grace for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal given to all mankind by the death and resurrection of Jesus. In the next section of this lesson, your tele-instructor will discuss the means of grace, the Lord's Supper, and baptism further. It's time also to begin thinking about your final project. Again, I'm Pastor Peter. Thank you for joining me. May God bless your continued studies.